In this video, you will get a closer look at the Chevrolet Bel Air 4th generation, 1959 to 1960. An overview, its origin, price range, and more. So stay tuned. <laughs> What's going on? This is the classic dude again. Chevrolet created a new design for its Bell Airline in 1959, which was a little different from the earlier 1958 Bel Air version. There wasn't much of a change to the interior of the model cars. The exterior of the car, however, was given a major distinctive feature at the rear. Furthermore, the wheelbase of the 1959 to 1960 model range was relatively longer in comparison with those of its predecessors. The 1959 to 1960 Bel Airs retained the body style of the earlier 1958 version, in that there was a two-door sedan, a two-door hardtop, a four-door sedan, a four-door hardtop. However, the years 1959 to 1960 did not see the production of a model convertible. Stay with me till the end, and I will let you in on how much this car would cost in today's markets. In 1959, the most visible aspect of the Chevrolet Bel Air new design was the tail fins at the rear, which were shaped like wings. Unlike the 1958 model, which had a 117.5 inch wheelbase, the wheelbase of the 1959 model was 3,500 millimeters, 119 inches with a length of 210.9 inches as opposed to the previous 209.1 inch length of the previous model. This increase in length made the Chevy the longest car in the range of low-priced cars. A significant change since it used to be the shortest at 1957. Furthermore, the thickness of the doors of the 1959 Bel Air was reduced, and as such, it had more width on the outside by 76 mm, 3 inches, than the 1958 Bel Air, and it was also wider on the inside by 130 mm, 5 inches. The 1959 models continued with the X-Frame, which was introduced in the previous model. However, the strength of the frame was increased, and it was enlarged just so it supports the new body style. Since 1953, the Bel Air series had been at the top. However, by 1959, they were now mid-range cars, and although wagons were still in a class of their own, they still used the model number of the car series. For instance, the middle-range wagons, which had the model number of the Chevrolet Bel Air, were the Parkwood 6-passenger and Kingswood 9-passenger. There were only minor changes under the hood. The cars had various speed options, which included special cams, lowered compression, and fuel injection, which raised horsepower to 315. There was also an optional parking brake warning lights. There was also a minor external variation between 1959 and 1960 models. The front end of the 1960 models was more restrained than their predecessors, but they retained the cone tail lights from 1958 instead of the cat size that the 1959 models used. The body styles they offered were the same as the previous models, which include sedans and hardtops. The Impala series was the model range that had convertibles in 1960, and the rear window overhang, as well as the huge wraparound rear window, were features retained in the Bel Air Sports Sedan. There were two taillights on the side of the Bel Airs and Biscaynes, whereas on the Impalas, there were three taillights on either side. Three engines were used for the fourth generation Bel Air. The first was a 235.5 cubic inch, 3.9 liter blue flame I6 engine, which was replaced with a 283 cubic inch, 4.6 liter small block V8 engine, which was capable of producing 315 horsepower while the final one was a 348 cubic inch, 5.7 liter big block V8 engine, which generated 335 horsepower at 5,800 RPM. The fourth generation Bel Airs used three transmissions, which include a three-speed manual transmission, a four-speed manual transmission, and a two-speed power glide automatic transmission. The units of the Bel Airs produced between 1958 and 1960 numbered around 447,100 cars. I did promise to give you the details concerning the price range of the fourth generation Bel Airs if you remained with me till the end. Now that we're here, 
The price is currently somewhere between $39,720 and $42,000. That's quite the sum, right? That's all for today, guys. I'm sure you love this video, so hit that like button and stay tuned for more classic car videos.